Hi YouTube, this is Joe Calton with Calton Cutlery. You can visit me on the web, CaltonCutlery.com. Okay, so today is uh, a pretty off-topic video. Um, I was uh, working on a new project. Um, uh, I got my old 3030 out, and turkey season in Wyoming is coming up here pretty soon. And here we're allowed to use uh, rifles for turkey hunting. And so typically, um, you know, I, I use a... Um, Kind of a specialized load. It's a, a blue dot load with a 45 grain Sierra Hornet bullet out of my 223, um, running around 2,300 feet a second, 2,400 feet a second, something like that. Basically, it turns your 22 or your 223 into kind of halfway between a 22 mag and a 22 Hornet, and it works really good. I mean, it uh, it's very effective on turkeys. Um, there's not a whole lot of uh, uh, meat damage, um, but yet it you know it puts them down fairly quickly. And <clears throat> you know, I mean, it's it, it's just a good uh, uh, a good all-around combination. This year, I decided I wanted to um, um, do some more work with some cast bullets and my 3030. And so, what I was doing was uh, I've got a Lee, you know, I've got the the casting stuff out here, and I'm using the the Lee mold, and it casts these lovely little 150 grain um, round nose flat points for the 3030. And so these are going to get uh, uh, powder coated with Eastwood's, um, I think they just call it, oh, uh, Eastwood Hot Coat Ford Light Blue One Pound. So, um, and there's your part number right, right up in there. Um, this is kind of a new one for me, um, you know, the powder coating thing and everything um, for, you know, rifle and, and pistol uh, lead bullets. Well, then I got to thinking about it, and I'm sitting here and I'm casting up a whole bunch of these. Well, I also got a Lee mold to, um, to run these uh, .375 diameter round balls for my slingshots. You know, .375 is also 9.5 mil. And that's the size that I shoot the most, um, you know, out of my slingshot. It's the 9.5 mil steel. I use the GZK pit locating pouches, you know, that are sized for a 9.5 mil ball. So I decided to get the, the, the lead mold to cast a lead 9.5 mil ball um, just to play around with, honestly. Um, you know, this, within the last year, I think I've killed... Four cottontail rabbits. Um, I don't know how many pigeons, or uh, uh, I haven't killed any pigeons yet, but how, I don't know how many sparrows, blackbirds, you know, in, uh, protecting the garden, and then also, you know, gophers, the little ground squirrels. Um, and I think that's about it, really. And honestly, I haven't really had a problem with the killing power of 9.5 mil steel. It seems like it's a good combination um, between speed and, you know, size and weight. Um, I haven't tried anything with the 8 mil steel yet, um, but the 11 mil steel, um, you know, it, it kills pretty good, um, but it, it goes slow enough that I have problems sometimes with animals seeing it and then ducking out of the way. Uh, whereas the 9.5 mil steel, you get enough speed that that doesn't happen so much, uh, and yet you still get plenty of power. Anyway, so, um, so I got to thinking about it. And, you know, I think a lot of guys, uh, you know, would use lead more often with their slingshots. Except for the, um, you know, the thing with uh, lead, expo lead exposure and, you know, our health. Um, you know, I kind of wonder if that's been overdone a little bit. I mean, you know, I, I remember as a kid, we would hold pellets for our pellet rifles in our in our lip, you know, like it was chew. I mean, that was the original speed loader as far as I was concerned. And we mostly came out okay. Um, but I, I know guys now, they, they like the, the extra killing power of lead, um, but they don't like the lead exposure. So while I'm sitting here, I'm casting these bullets for my 3030, and I know I'm going to powder coat them, I got to thinking, well, well, why can't you powder coat slingshot ammo? I mean, it would be the same thing, really, wouldn't it? Um, this powder coat, it uh, it produces... Dang it, I should have brought some some of the bullets I had uh, out, out here in the shop, and I didn't. So the powder coat is like a paint, okay? And it comes in a powdered form. And you're going to see me, um, you know, powder coat some of these bullets here in a second. 
and pretty much what it does <coughs> is it's it's like it's a heat activated paint so it's a powder you tumble the the bullets in this powder and then you bake them in an oven at 400 degrees Fahrenheit for about 20 minutes or so and then that heat activates that that paint and then now you have a you know I mean something that's inert I mean it's it's basically like a polymer jacket for a bullet well why wouldn't it be the same thing with slingshot ammo what I'm thinking here is that you would have all the density and all the penetration and and all the the positives of lead slingshot ammo but the one big negative, you know, the lead exposure, now it would be contained inside this powder coat and now you could handle it, you can just carry it in your pockets, you know, I mean, you wouldn't have to worry about washing your hands all the time, you know, if, if you do when you're, you're handling lead uh, slingshot, um, slingshot ammo. Uh, honestly, I think it'd be about the best of all worlds. Plus, um, the... Uh, you know the colors this is just the Ford light blue I've also got gray but uh, I guess this comes in all different colors that you want I mean red yellow white purple pretty much anything so you could color code your lead ammo and that way you could kinda tell what it is you know right off the bat I mean if you look at you know reach into your pocket and you pull out and you've got lead and steel well the lead's gonna be blue and, or whatever you use and the steel is going to be either bright shiny or you know all the way to rusted. So anyway so uh, we are going to powder coat some of these bullets right here and I've got a batch that are in the, the toaster right now um, and you'll get to see what the process looks like. There goes the ding on the, the toaster. We'll open that up and let it get going or let it get cooling. So probably first of all, I mean, if you guys have never casted uh, bullets or anything, um, I just had a couple in here to, uh, to keep the mold warm. So this is a Lee um, two, two cavity mold, okay? Uh, this one's, I think I actually picked this up over the weekend uh, for Midway USA. Um, I want to say it was about 30 bucks. <coughs> I think Midway had a deal going that if you spent more than 50 bucks, they would take care of ship, shipping. So I just picked up a couple of molds and, um, you know, didn't have to pay for shipping. So about $30 for a mold. This Lee production melting pot here, uh, it's a 10-pound bottom pour with uh, an adjustable heat um, dial on the back. Um, I used to, uh, when I was a kid, I, I raced, uh, you know, like competitively with a, a revolver um, in an outfit called uh, i -Corps. And, you know, I mean, it was uh, revolvers only, double action revolvers, and it was the, the action shooting type stuff that you see where, you know, you, you've got a guy standing on a line, he's got his hands up in the air, and they, they sound a buzzer, and he picks up his, his pistol and he shoots a plate rack. And then he reloads and he runs back here and he shoots another plate rack and, you know, I mean, it's all exciting stuff. But you shoot a lot. And so, you know, as a young fella, I just couldn't, uh, couldn't afford jacketed bullets as, as much as I shot. So this melting pot has probably, I don't even want to guess how many bullets this thing has casted. I mean, I, it would, I mean we used to go through two or 3,000 rounds in a weekend just at a meet. Um, <coughs> You know, so that couple thousand rounds during the week, you know, is practice and everything. Um, you know, I mean, I, I guess this thing has casted at least 100,000 bullets or so. I mean, it's just, and it's still going. I mean, this is, I did that right when my boy was born, and he's 19 now. So, you know, I've been using this melting pot for 20 years, and a whole bunch of bullets cast through it. I think new, they're, now they're like 100 bucks. Heck of a deal. So anyway, so you take your mold, and... You lift this up and you get lead gets poured into the, the mold cavities. You wait until the lead solidifies on the top of the sprue. Uh, you know, nice soft wood stick. Strike your sprue plate. That knocks that off. Sometimes you hit it again just to get the sprues off. And then you drop your whatever it is you cast onto a, a couple of thicknesses of towel just to kind of cushion their fall. And then um, I don't really when I store these I like to keep bullets in them and that way you don't get uh, you don't run the risk of like corrosion um, you know dust and all that kind of stuff getting into the cavities uh, because there's lead already in there okay so we are gonna take just a uh, fresh chicken liver you know just any kind of plastic bucket really here and then 
uh, which ones were hot? Okay, those are hot. So we're going to take all these. Now we might keep a couple on the side, you know, that aren't aren't blue. Okay, so that's that's about 50 uh, 9.5 mil lead balls in there. So we're going to take our powder coat. And this, I haven't really done a whole lot of powder coating. Um, I think this will only be like the fifth batch or so. But it kind of seems to me like you dump it in there, and the bull and the the bullets take however much they need, and the excess just stays in the bottom of the in the bottom of the bucket. Okay, so there they're all in there. There's also clear. We'll put the lid on. And we do the shake. This tumbling will also help to knock off little bits of the sprue right there and kind of round it off and even it out. So you just sit there and you shake it and you shake it and you shake it. While I'm shaking this, I'm going to pull the bullets out that have already been done. We're almost doing like a Martha Stewart type of deal. And then we'll close the toaster and preheat it again. Okay, that should be about enough. Okay, now see those balls are all coated with the powder coat. And you can see that there's, you know, the extra powder coat is kind of on the bottom of the, um, <coughs> the container. It didn't get, uh, you know, onto the ball. So the ball, like, took however much uh, coating it needed, and the rest of it just didn't get coated. So now let's come over here. You'll have to pardon the sun. It's kind of in the late afternoon. And I typically like to shoot videos earlier in the morning so that we don't get this uh, we don't get this sunlight, but uh, we get what we get today. These are the the ones that are done. They're still a little on the warm side, and they're kind of stuck to the um, um, you know the little wire mesh here. But that is what you get. Let's bring you over here and. Uh, Maybe that's a little bit better so you don't get the light from the, the window. You get a perfectly, basically painted lead ball. Now, um, as to how tough this stuff is, um, the guy that I've been following the most with this, uh, his handle on YouTube is uh, Elvis Ammo. And um, he's been doing a lot of testing with this stuff. Um, he did a, a how tough is it video where um, he took a bullet that had been powder coated and he smashed it flat with a hammer and the powder coating never came off never chipped I mean it was still there um, he tried that with a several different colors, and then he also took a torch, a uh, propane torch, and melted one of the bullets, and the lead inside the bullet melted, and the powder coat was still there. All right, so let's dump, dump this out onto the tray. And all this is is uh, um, quarter-inch uh, hardware cloth, you know, from Walmart. And it should be cooled down enough I can handle it by hand now. So we take this, into the toaster it goes at 400 degrees for about 20 minutes or so. Now some of these will kind of stick together, but you just break them apart. I mean there is a little bit there that, um, you know, that isn't, uh, you know, com perfectly round, but it's still just a coating. I mean, as good as, 
as far beyond like rocks as these things are, you know, as far as slingshot ammo, I mean, I really don't see a little bitty irregularity like that affecting, you know, your shooting. I mean, it's not like we've got scopes or anything on our slingshots. And, you know, we're shooting inch groups at 100 yards or anything. I mean, we're just, uh, we're honestly doing good to stay on. Oh, I got a light over there that's out. But we'll go ahead and shoot a couple of these. You should still be able to see uh, right there is my catch box. Now right in that corner. You'll see it move. But there's a white uh, um, target down there that'll flip up. The dogs are probably going to go crazy. See how hard those things are hitting? Now they do shoot a little bit low than lower than the steel because they're they're heavier. These are 82 grains, I think. Now, well, actually, let's. Uh, I'll show you the difference here. You c you should be able to hear it at least. Okay, we'll hit that that one spinner with a. That last one was lead. We'll shoot it with a piece of steel now. Okay, now we'll go back to the lead. I don't know if you guys can tell the difference in the sound bear sound there, but it's it, it's substantial. I mean, these things are hitting. That was steel, and this last one will be lead. Uh, I'd say they're probably hitting a good half again harder. They're probably hitting a good half again harder than the steel is. Which, like I said, I think the steel weighs uh, 55 grains. And this mold, the box says that it'll weigh 79 grains um, with pure lead. So I'm using straight up wheel weight material here. And so, uh, um, you know, that's got quite a bit of tin and antimony in it. And so it'll probably weigh, instead of 79 grains, it might weigh 75 grains. So if the ball is 50% heavier, then you would think that you would get somewhere 30 to 40% more energy. But anyway, so um, <clears throat> it'll be exciting. I'll go ahead and take these. Uh, um, I think I've got about a hundred of these between the two batches and um, you know I'll start shooting them a little bit and um, you know see how they hold up I mean if you can squash one well here let's squash one for life. let's grab uh, let's grab one that's not stuck together and let's grab a pair of needle nose pliers here and then we'll go we'll go to the anvil on the, the vise Yeah, that's as flat as I can squash it with those pliers. Uh, let's see, my fingers are going to be in the way. And see, that, that powder coat didn't chip. It didn't flake. Um, I think there's a... See, you could tell the, the indents of the, where my pliers were grabbing it. And, um, you know, heck. I don't even see any real shiny spots there either. So it's, um, I mean, this is some pretty tough stuff. So I can't imagine that, um, I can't imagine if this encaps, encapsula, you know, if this covers lead that well, that, you know, if it's rattling around in your pocket for, you know, a day or two before you shoot it, that you're going to get any kind of lead exposure, you know, through this powder coat. So if that um, if that's the case, <coughs> then it might be um, you know I mean depending upon your setup you know your bands um, what you're after out of your slingshot as far as performance 
if you're just target shooting, you know, I would say stick with steel. You know, I mean, it's it's not worth the extra time to, you know, to cast up the balls and to powder coat them and everything. But if you're a hunter, um, you know, and whatever it is that you're hunting, you think you, you need that extra performance out of, that lead will give you over steel, then this absolutely could be a really good way to go. Um, me personally, um, here in Wyoming, uh, Small game is legal fare for slingshots. Um, you know, they say that uh, you can take small game any manner, uh, pretty much in any manner. So, you know, slingshots, blowguns, pellet guns, you know, all that kind of stuff. So, you know, I've hunted rabbits with slingshots. Um, squirrels, uh, I really don't run into a whole lot of squirrels here, um, like tree type squirrels. Um, but when I do, I'll honestly take a slingshot after those. There, a slingshot would actually be a little bit safer for a squirrel than, say, a rifle, because typically squirrels are shot up in, uh, in trees. And with a rifle, um, you know, you're shooting a rifle at, you know, at a, an elevation. And so, you know, that bullet could come down a mile and a half later. And so uh, a slingshot would be quite a bit safer than a rifle for a, a squirrel. Uh, I know the guys over in UK, like uh, the guy uh, with Caddyshack, uh, Wayne, I think his name is. I think he's shooting ducks and geese and stuff with his. Uh, I'm not sure the legality about that here in the States or not. Um, so small game slingshots. Uh, then you get into your, your varmints and predators. So like the ground squirrels that we have around here at my house. Um, uh, Sparrows and starlings are considered an invasive species. So are um, uh, collared doves. Uh, one of these days, I'm going to get a couple of those and see how you know see how they taste on the the barbecue. Um, pigeons, uh, you know, any of that kind of stuff. I think you know steel would be plenty for. But um, you know, like we've got chickens, and so we've got fox that come around occasionally. You know, if they got bad to the point where I started trapping them. <clears throat> you know, with like a leg hold trap. Um, you know, I think that extra performance, honestly, I mean, if, if I'm looking at dispatching a fox, you know, in a trap, you know, at say 15 feet, oh, I absolutely would use one of these um, with a slingshot to dispatch that fox. And, you know, I don't see where that would have any, any problem at all, um, you know, with a nice, you know, solid headshot dispatching that fox, you know, humanely. Um, and, you know, there might come a time where I get to try that. But there, I think uh, that extra performance of lead over steel would be a good uh, scenario. Also, like things like raccoons, um, you know, things like that. Um, I think lead would be a, a, a really good idea for that. Um, so anyway, so like I said, this is something that, that the idea just struck me this afternoon while I was casting up these 30-30 bullets, and I thought... Uh, you know, heck, it's a good idea. Why not try it? And so if any of you guys have got the capabilities of, you know, casting lead and powder coating, um, you know, for your slingshots, give it a try. See if you like it <clears throat> and let everybody know if you do like it. One thing, so this powder coat, you buy it, you tumble it, you bake it, that's it, right? But these are clean lead balls, okay? They just got cast out of, uh, you know, wheel weight alloy. I don't think that, like, if you were to purchase, uh, say, like a box of, uh, like, Hornaday muzzle-loading balls, I don't think the powder coat would work all that well on those because those balls already have, like, a, like a wax coating on them. Um, and I don't think, well, you could try it, but I don't think that the powder coat would, would attach to that. Or actually, I might try it here as soon as I shut the video off because I've got a couple of those over there. Um... So yeah, so uh, that was kind of the idea of the day, and I figured y'all I'd bring y'all along. So I hope you enjoyed the video, and or oh, wait a minute, again this is Joe Calton with Calton Cutlery, and visit me on the web CaltonCutlery.com. Hope you enjoyed the video, and we will see you next time.